Hey guys, and welcome back to the channel. My name is Brandon of Performance Transmissions, and today on the bench we have a 2003 Chevrolet Corvette C5 5.7 liter, and it is a 383 stroker build on the engine, and we're going to do some upgrades and updates to this transmission. This 4L60 transmission, we have already prepped the case. Everything is cleaned up. The case side has been decked. All the bushings are taken out of everything. We're going to get this thing put together a little bit at a time. All right, let's go ahead and get this started. What I like to do with the case is completely strip everything, get everything cleaned up, painted, primered, completely deck this one surface to make sure everything is completely flush and even we don't want to have any high ridges or low ridges to cause a hydraulic leak. One issue that I do like to go after in this case is the 3, 4, and capsule. That's the first thing that I like to take out and change so I don't have to worry about it. Alright, so the first thing that I like to do to remove that capsule is I use a tap. It is a 10... It is a 10 by 1.5. We'll take and cut some threads into it. We'll take and run that all the way down until it stops. I'll take a bell housing bolt with the same pitch thread and diameter. It's about three inches long and install it into the capsule. Just enough for where she starts to bite pretty good. Then I'll take a pry bar and just Wedge it, just like that. Take and blow the case out. and install our new capsule. Now the driver that I use is actually the pin for this one is actually the same diameter to fit all the way in and drive it in. Let's talk about the low and reverse clutch. We're going to set the clearance up. There is a measurement to take and it includes using the center support, the low and reverse wave plate, the one that we are using 
So there's 93 thousandths. Our steels, 68 thousandths. And our frictions are 86 thousandths. What you're going to want to do is stack the clutch pack up friction steel, friction steel, friction steel, friction steel, friction steel. And we're going to take and measure the low and reverse clutch setup <clears throat> from the top height all the way down to the table. Do this on a flat surface and place your hand on the clutch pack when doing this measurement. The specification you're trying to achieve is 1.2 to 1.2 hundredths of an inch. If that is within specification without using a selective plate or getting a thicker wave plate, which this one is pretty much the thickest one I think there is actually a 96 thousandths thick plate without having to use a shim plate on the bottom. And we have one point one one point two one one. And we are within specifications for this clutch pack setup. We'll go back and reinstall the ring gear and the rear planetary. Install our wave spring. With this mark identification towards the six o'clock position and the most open surface to the right. And we'll just alternate steel friction steel. Same thing with your steel plates. The identification mark is noted here at the six o'clock position with the open side towards the right. Before we install the center support, I have already installed the Sonex low roller collar and new low sprag. Before we do that, we're going to take our anti rattle clunk spring in this position to the lower right section of the case and allow it to sit there. Now on the center support has the widest section right here goes towards this section in the case. Line up the collar and install the center support and ensure that it is flat all the way around. This one definitely did not need a case saver. But it is pretty tight. There we go. 
install the center support snap ring where the anti rattle cluck spring is with the edge of it. Make sure that this edge here meets flush up against it and not on top of it. Just like that. Now, I have this whole setup already set together, and we do have our new wide bushing in the sun gear. Sonex Smart Shell. Hmm. Something doesn't feel right, take it back apart. Hub with the front planetary with new bearings and new bushings. We're going to take our output shaft and install it into the case. And then we're going to take the snap ring for the output shaft. There we go. Need a little nudge. So at this point, there's a section of the videos that I've been looking back through that are missing that is very important about the output shaft in play. The output shaft in play, the transmission is completed at this point, and I'm going back through some video editing, and I cannot find the one video that shows exactly how to set up the output shaft in play. The output shaft is in play is very important with any kind of high performance builds that you're doing. <clears throat> you don't want anything completely free and get everything as close as you can to the bottom number that is the range. The range for the output shaft in play is five thousandths to thirty-five thousandths, and what I initially had was um, thirty-five right at the limit at 35 thousandths and added a 25 thousandths shim to the bottom section of the output planetary ring gear. I had a couple of um, 
like 8.6 rear axle pinion shims that added up and added right at about yet yeah, i added 25 thousandths shim to the bottom section of the before i put the bearing on and that allowed all of my in play to give me right at where i needed it at right at five thousandths Isn't it amazing how fast I can take it apart, put it back together, take it apart, put it back together? All right, let's look at that a little bit better. That looks a lot better. The splines on the output shaft are meeting the bottom section in the front planet just above the deck. That's what I was looking at earlier and just did not seem right with me. I barely have any in play. That's a lot better. That breaks it down a lot tighter with a little, just a hair of in play. All right, next let's work on the input drum. The input drum, I like to start with measuring our three, four clutch pack clearance first before assembling the rest of the unit. We'll take, start by installing our green O-ring seal. And install our 3-4 clutch piston. Then I'm gonna install the apply ring And then I have our three, four clutch set. I am using, I've already measured this. So that is a shim that I'm gonna end up using. I am using the Sonex apply and backing plate kit along with the Robestus GPZ friction set. We'll start by adding the apply plate. Go friction steel, friction steel, friction steel. Yeah. 
and then install our boost springs. and then our backing plate. Then install the snap ring. All right, the clutch pack travel that I have here is about 70 thousandths. It is just on its limit. Um, what I ended up doing was taking a, a 40 thousandths shim it is an additional shim that i get sometimes with the um z packs when i've used them in in previous times and it is a good shim to use that will if i add this to the bottom what i do is i add it to the bottom friction and it will bring my clutch clearance all the way down to where i need it to between 15 and 30 thousandths is really where you need to put this clutch pack and that will bring that will bring this roughly down to about 20 25 thousandths all right let's continue stacking this up so i take the apply ring for the three fourth clutch pack the return spring and i go ahead and set up the forward piston and our close coast clutch which is our overrun or engine brake engine braking piston set all those up install it in lock it down but the next part i've already taken the liberty of installing the return spring and the retaining clip in the return spring, there are sections where the retaining ring, you have to make sure that it is fully seated um, that holds that snap ring in place. If you do not have it fully seated in one section, it could either pop out on you. So now we're gonna start with the overrun clutches. There are two overrun steels and two overrun frictions. These are your engine brake or coast clutch. Start with the steel, then the friction steel friction then our backing plate our forward clutch steel wave spring then forward steel friction steel friction steel friction steel Friction steel, friction, and then our backing plate. Our, pl cut, <clears throat> our clutch pack clearance for the forward clutch is 30 thousandths to 68 thousandths. I've already assembled and measured this one, and I've got it right down at 31 thousandths. But just so you can see, I have 10 thousandths feeler gauge and a 21 thousandths feeler gauge. I'll take and pull up on the, on the backing plate. First, I'll start with the 21 thousandths. And then out are 10 thousandths. Just until you got nice resistance. Now let's take all this apart and install our forward sprag. We'll set that to the side.
our new dual cage sprague. There's a way that I've always started to remember exactly how, how this is installed, which direction it goes to. Um, if you do install this incorrectly, you will have a no third and fourth condition. So the rule of thumb that I apply is if I'm holding the sun gear, I should be able to lock this in the clockwise position and rotate freely in the counterclockwise position. Just like so, I should lock to the right, which is counter, which is clockwise, and free spin counterclockwise. Install our hub and retaining ring. Next one we'll take and install our new bushings. I've already taken the liberty of driving the old ones out. I'm taking an oversized bushing driver to center it down evenly and flat. The same thing to the other side. Now on the inside you can see the witness marks where the old bushings were to set the depth. Same applies on both sides. Looks good on that side. Nice. At this point, I like to take just to make sure that my bushings are centered. Take and lubricate the bushings and match them with the outfit shaft. Should turn freely with no binding. All right, back to the input drum. Let's put this together. We have a new lube seal. If you forget that, that lubricates the rear section and the rear planetaries of this transmission. You're gonna burn the rear section up in a heartbeat. Install our overrun clutch first then our vacuum plate again with a new bearing and then install your forward sprag the forward clutch spring plate your frictions and steels
and your backing plug retaining ring. Install our 3 4 clutch kit. I'll even recheck and show you the clutch clearance that I did come up with. I'm starting with the Sonex apply plate first, then I'm using a shimmed steel afterwards. Then I'll install the frictions and steels. Then our boost springs. And our backing plate. And retaining ring. Sure that they are free if you get it too tight you'll have hard engagement and you'll have issues with release on the clutch it will drag let's see Here I have 25 thousandths. Right, I've already gotten the turbine shaft seals for the overrun rear lube 3, 4, and 4 clutch. We're going to install some new ones. Lubricate the seal sizer and the seals. taking size and fall all four of them at the same time Go after the pump pocket. I've already installed the new Teflon bushing and new front seal. We're going to start with our slide ring. This is what increases and decreases and also keeps line pressure stable. A new o-ring for a little bit of 
the trans gel down into the pocket one side and install our metal ring alright we're going to take and install it into the pump pocket in this direction first then we're going to add our cushion seal and our wiper to that location take and align the pivot pin spring first and new Sonax pivot pin I like these 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 are really good okay we're going to install that now let's start reading a little bit into the performance pack into the pump section Power PM pump slide spring. It's figure 11. Remove both the OE pump slide springs from the pump housing and replace with the Sonex spring. Our new pump slide spring. Oh, that one's going to be tight. And I'm not going to be able to use that one. Use a flat blade that goes inside the spring itself. missing my spacer all right we're going to start with a pump rotor with the section that has the indentations and then one of our rings pump rings Install that. Well, let me lubricate this first. You do not want this pump to be dry. Much better.
glass pumps ring. So the side, let's work on the pump body. In the pump body, I've already installed the new stator support wide bushing in the front and bushing in the rear. We're going to go after the boost valve and line pressure regulator valve. Now this one has the orange springs in it from the Transgo kit. I wonder if they did anything with the boost valve. There we go. We're still using the original boost valve. And no modifications to the line pressure regulator valve. All right. PR boost valve and spring. Remove the OE boost sleeve and springs and save the OE bumper spring for reuse. So we're going to go back and reinstall Clean some of this out. Go back and install the line pressure regulator valve. Sure it's all the way down. <clears throat> Spring and our bumper. It's our new spring and the OE bumper. I 
there was one shim that was in this kit. I'm curious. I think that's for another part. Nope, there is a spacer. You gotta read into that spacer because there's two different lengths with the boost valves. You know, the, the OE boost valve sleeve comes in two lengths depending on the year. The 1994 to 2004 boost valve boost sleeve is longer and should be replaced with the Sonex boost sleeve and included Sonex spacer. So this one's a 2003 model, so we do need the spacer. Stall our O-rings. Make them seat a lot better. They can roll them a little bit. And lubricate your o rings. All right, back to the pump body with a line pressure regulator valve. Sonex PR spring. The OE bump stop spring. And we are using our Sonex boost valve with the O-rings. <clears throat> Be easy to do not cut those O-rings. And it is telling me to use the spacer. All right, we'll do the ceiling rings after I set the pump together. So, now that I have just the lower section of the case assembled, I can use the upper section of the case to align the pump. Just make sure you have the O-ring for the pump or the pump seal. The pump seal will go later if it's a uh, 04 and later style. So I take this section in the pump body, line it to the left, to the same section here on this pump, pump side, pump body.
five pump bolts, 13 millimeters. Now you can use a pump alignment band if you want to, however you like to do it. I've done it both ways. It's just typically how I like to. Make sure at least all the holes are in alignment. Sometimes I used to even take and just put a straight edge on like every quarter edge of this to make sure that it was straight before I even tried to install it. All the holes look nice and even. And the pump falls right out. I'll go ahead and immediately tighten one bolt. Now we will torque our pumped two pump body bolts to 18 foot pounds.
install our o-ring seal And in this section, we'll need to install a new line pressure filter. Leave these two for the separator plate. Pressure manifold subkit. Nope. No dry O-rings ever. Doesn't matter what transmission you're working on. All right, let's put some new Teflon seals on our rear stator support for the reverse input drum. Even though this unit was just freshly built, I'm still gonna replace them. All right, seal sizer that I do have, I got from Street Smarts. A little about a year ago, I decided just to try them out. They are kind of finicky, but they do do the job. Um, sealing them is another thing. The seal sizer itself does not get the Teflon rings sized down to where it actually needs to be. This is, yeah, street side tools. Make sure that everything's cleaned up and don't have any debris in them. And yes, I am using tub of towels. The one thing that I have to do with the piece that sizes them out is that I have to take the Teflon rings and work them out just a bit to get them over the edge. Coat them with Transgel. Yeah, see it's a little tight there. I still gotta stretch them out a little bit more just to get them started. Now, the first side will size one side with the lower ring, and then you have to flip it over. To get the other ring on. The other thing that I have to do is walk the seal around and compress it 
to get the sizer to match. It is a pain, but I kind of got used to it. In the future, I will invest in a different sizer. I do have the GM one. Um, I got this off of uh, eBay through Atlantic City, I think. They're kind of local here. I know everybody's probably thinking, why don't you just grab some electrical tape? I could do that if I wanted to. I don't know if sometimes I just enjoy doing this. I guess more of a hands-on feel. And it doesn't really do anything to cut the Teflon rings when I put the sizer down on it. It is a little bit of a pain. All right. <clears throat> Even out the seals. Try to form that one a bit better. Try to get them back to a circular spot. And take the sizer. I'll walk in a little bit, take a look at what I'm doing, make any kind of adjustments to the Teflon ring because we do not want to cut it. Even if I take this one, that almost immediately sizes the top ring. And then the bottom. Now I'll leave that on for just a second. Take it right back off. And install this one. This is just a little bit tighter. And set that to the side. All right, we're going to talk about adjusting the top end play. Since in the output end play we had to add twenty-five thousandths, we brought everything up. The original shim. And this transmission was a number 71. That is 102 thousandths of an inch. I've got a six, number 68, which is what I typically see. And it is 83 thousandths. So I take and add 25 thousandths to 83. I'm a bit more closer to what I needed to be. Not knowing what the in play of the transmission was prior. It's going to be closer to the number we need to know. Let's install our number 68, our Torrington bearing, and reinstall our reverse input drum. Reinstall it into the transmission.
We install our pump gasket. Oh. Can't forget the two four band. Install the anchor pin, then our pump gasket. Somebody's out there racing. <laughs> Put the pump back on. Take and put two pump bolts in. Moves freely. Wire in play feels a lot better. Let's see where we're at. We have 15,000 in play.
any tighter than 15 thousandths with the expansion of everything inside the transmission can cause the bearings to fail. We'll tighten those pump bolts to 18 foot pounds. All right, front end play specifications are between 15 and 36 thousandths. If you're running any kind of high horsepower applications, you want to make sure that your in play or your clearances are to the bottom end as far as you can. You want nothing loose inside this thing. Last, we're gonna put our lockup O-ring. Tomorrow, we'll start on the rest. That'll be all for this evening, guys. Remember, hit the subscribe and hit that bell notification. We'll see you next time.